I'm a feminist, but I was almost late to this recording because I stayed up till 7 a.m. binge watching Love Island. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's who I am now. I'm a feminist, but on the way to the theatre, somebody in Oxford here stopped me, a lovely listener of this podcast, and went, oh my God, I've listened to your podcast and I really love it. Can I have a selfie? She didn't ask that, but I gave her one anyway. And, um, which was lovely, but I hadn't, didn't have any of my makeup on yet. My hair was really just sort of scraggly, and I felt I looked a bit not that great. So I was a little bit annoyed she'd recognise me. <laughs> and I was like, I think I look better than this in... Not in real life, because that is in real life. <laughs> but I think I look better than this. Like, when you see my photos online, obviously I've had my makeup done, and I'm posing and doing that. She recognised me from my photo, and I was like, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I wanted her to think, oh, there's someone who looks a bit like Deborah Francis White, but not as beautiful. <laughs> I'm a feminist, but this week, when a woman confused me for a very, very famous Indian-American actress from the US adaptation of The Office, I did not correct her. <laughs> oh! Is that right? Yeah. Someone thought you were Mindy Carling. Yeah, I was like, it looks so different. I liked it. Yeah. It was good. I'm a feminist, but somebody told me the other day that they knew a male gay couple and they were both really ripped and when they got annoyed with each other they'd actually have proper fist fights. And I said, I find that kind of hot. And she said, Deborah, that's domestic abuse. And I went, oh yeah, sorry. Yes, no, it's not hot. It's not hot at all. It's the opposite of hot. I mean, in a fetishy way, it's a bit hot. Like... As a fantasy, it's a bit hot. Obviously, in real life, that shouldn't happen. No, but they're consenting. They're consenting to the. They're consenting thing. to the fight, but yeah, yeah. So it's and not domestic abuse. Matched. I'm hoping it isn't because I said it was hot. So I'm on your side. I'm a feminist, but I hope that it goes without saying that the lady from my last story was a white woman. <laughs> Which lady? From what, what story? <laughs> oh, the Mindy Carling story. I thought you're you... right. There was too long a gap between the two to keep, get you all to keep up. <laughs> I'm learning as say, we go, too. Can you say it again? I'm a feminist, but I hope it goes without saying that the woman who thought I was Mindy Carling was a white woman. Uh, <laughs> that was unnecessary. Nice. Cool. Guys, if they're you're not all, to do they're a not all belters. No. Some of them are confessions. Sure. I mean, you laugh at her like, mm, yay, domestic violence, but for me, no. <laughs> you Shame on all of you. You said it wasn't domestic I'm so violence. Defensive. I know where I've turned now. <laughs> I'm a feminist. But I bought a signed poster of Alan Cumming from Alan Cumming <laughs> because he was auctioning it off on eBay for charity. And it was a picture of him as the MC in Cabaret, a musical that I love, but I have a thing for Alan Cumming as the MC. I had a recording of it that I used to play over and over and over again. So it's kind of a pin-up for me, and if we ever got together, I would ask him to do it. <laughs> and in bed, I mean, I'd ask him to pretend to be that character. And I mean, that was probably clear. And <laughs> when his people said to me, what would you like Alan to write on the back of the poster? I said, <laughs> just get Alan to write any quote that he wants from Cabaret, because I wanted him to send me a secret message. <laughs> so I thought, whatever that quote is, I know it's for me, and I know it's a code. <laughs> this is true. I'm, you, people, some people are going, she's run out of I'm a feminist, but she's just making stuff up now. No, this I've, is true. I've seen it, I've seen it. And guess what he wrote? He wrote, and some musical fans will understand, the secret message Alan Cumming was sending me. He wrote, hello, Deborah. Tonight we may lose the battle. <laughs> Love, Alan. Does anyone know what that means? Okay, tell me, tell me, who knows? Yes, because the line before it, it's in the Welcome and Bienvenue, Welcome song. There's a line in that song where he says, it's so hot in the Kit Club Club, sometimes we have to uh, fight with the girls to stop them taking all of their clothes off. Hang around, who knows? Tonight we may lose the battle. So what he was secretly sending me was a message that he wanted to get naked with me. I don't know who that is. <laughs> who Alan Cumming is? What? Alan 
isn't coming if you're listening. No, no, either, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're say, listening. Like, if yeah, you're no, listening. Like, okay, do you ever watch The Good Wife? He's yeah, yeah. Eli in The Good Wife. Oh, I can't remember all the characters. What? <laughs> he's the really cool... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's, and he's like, he's the spin doctor. He's the, he's the spin doctor yeah. for... Uh, I see your taste wheelhouse now. Alan Cumming, if you're listening, and if you know Alan Cumming and you listen to this podcast, please play this for him. I would really love you to come on the podcast to talk about feminism. No. Sorry, can I just say, Deborah's worked so hard on this podcast for years and years. She built up such a great fan base of like really engaged, excited like women and non-binary people and people who are just so excited by what you're doing. And you're like, today you discover it was a ploy <laughs> for Deborah to fuck Alan Cumming. <laughs> from the Oxford Playhouse. The Spontaneity Shop presents The Guilty Feminist with me, Deborah Francis White, guest co-host Bisha Kayali and very special guest Laura Davis and Alice Fraser talking about wins. This is The Guilty Feminist, the podcast in which we explore our noble goals as 21st century feminists and the hypocrisies and insecurities which undermine them. Hello, Bisha. Hello, Deborah. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. I mean, you? I've seen you backstage, I know. Let's yeah, not, we've done, we've done, done this round. Let's not pretend. Oh, no. Hello. I was going to do a, a subtle leg cross, yeah. but the chair nearly tipped me off. <laughs> Patri- a lot of chairs in Oxford are patriarchal. Um, <laughs> no, because yeah. this university was started for and by men, and it was a real struggle to get women in. Yeah? And, yeah, really struggle to get women in. And they How have... many black students did they have admitted in the last... At least four. At least four. <laughs> yeah. There you go. At least four. Said with such pride. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that was ironic. Okay, good. Just yeah. catching on, yeah, yeah. getting the vibe. Yeah. It was ironic. But also well done for letting the women in. I mean, you know. Yeah. Good. <laughs> the Bisha K. Alley, the K stands for Killjoy, so if you didn't know that, <laughs> now you do. This is why I've asked Bisha to do this episode, because this episode is about our ability as feminists to celebrate when something good happens. Because sometimes we go, oh, there's a next thing, which there is a next thing, it's important, but also we need to take our moments and we need to enjoy our wins. And Bisha does that all the time. <laughs> Bisha does not do that all the time. So we're learning to enjoy ourselves tonight as feminists, and we're going to say, let's have a party sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Like mostly oh, we're I'm fighting a fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mostly we're fighting a fight. And it's a good lesson for me to learn. <laughs> for my mental health. <laughs> it is. It no, is. it is. We just, because yeah. it's easy for all of us to go, yeah, but what about? You know, yeah, well, what about is incredibly important. And we're also going to do, yeah, but what about? Absolutely, importantly, importantly, we're not going to rest on these yannies. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> I just want to come outside the performance lock in and be like, very good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Have you had a guilty week or a feminist week? Uh, surprisingly, feminist week, actually. Yeah, very feminist. What happened? I have two stories to tell. One, oh, thank God. <laughs> I went to a petrol station, yeah, all by my little self. And this altercation happened. So we're all supposed to be standing up in moments of dire things happening, right? Mm. Theoretically. Sure. I went to this petrol station. There was an older lady at the till behind a man who was definitely not white. I don't want to guess his race. He had a slight accent. And he was taking a long time, so eventually he told the cashier, it's fine, don't worry about it, I'm just going to leave. So he leaves. And as he's leaving, the woman is staring at him, and he turns around and he says, what are you staring at? And she says, you know why I'm staring at you. And then he says, leave me alone, you stupid old cow. And then I jumped in, because I was just standing witnessing, and I turned to him and I said, hey, there's no need for that, and I don't do that unless you feel safe to do so. I didn't feel safe to do so, but I just really am reckless with my life. <laughs> So I was up in this guy's face, and I was like, hey, there's no need for that. And then, while I was kind of in his face, the woman from behind turned to us, and she said, yeah, go back to where you came from. (laughs) And then I turned around, and I was like, adjust your tone, (laughs) Bisha. And I said, there's no need for that either. And then she said to me, you can go home too. (gasps) And what I should have said was, let's all take a class on intersectionality right now. Sure. I didn't say anything. That's when I went quiet and I was like, fuck both of you. <laughs> Get, on. Get on with your fuck days. Fuck all y'all. Fuck, yeah, fuck all of you. But the conclusion of the story was the guy at the till, who was also a person of colour like me who watched the whole thing, gave me like a 15% discount. Oh. <laughs> that was an ally discount. Yeah. Great. 
So you were allying for a sexist and a racist accidentally. Oh, my God. So what I'm saying is intersectionality pays. <laughs> Do it, it doesn't pay enough. It doesn't pay well, does it? pays 15% no. off. That's barely the pay gap. <laughs> he refunded you the pay gap, basically. Yeah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> but I was proud of myself for... Just, I mean, don't put yourselves at risk. And I shouldn't put myself at risk, but I was proud of myself for stepping up when I had that... You have that moment of, you know, like, I should do something. And then sometimes you're not in the mood, which is fine, but I did, and I felt good about it. Is there any water? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have got another story. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm just, I'm just Tom. Normally we have water on the desk. No, there's no water, Tom. No, but it's hot. It's, it's hot around the lights. It is really hot. It is very hot. It's hot around the lights. It's a normal thing to have water on the desk. Oh, I don't completely. think I'm being a diva. Oh, no, I'm I'll just do it for the, for the Chardonnay. Just chasing the laughter. Bro. Tom, where are the mojitos? <laughs> I ordered a strawberry daiquiri. Um, can I tell another story yes, of please. my feminism? I did a gig in the last month or two where I was uh, going on after the interval of this gig, and the MC, who will remain nameless, was a white man. And the act before the break was also a woman of colour. And before he brought me on, he started talking about how this gig had turned into a bit of an ethnic night. Um, and there was a... What? W- yeah. This what? Is, you think that's... What? That's way, guys. <laughs> in the front row, there was a woman who was Japanese, and then he looked her dead in the eye and said, what are you? And then he said, Taiwanese? And she said, I'm Japanese, and this can stop now. And then he made fun of her, and then he moved on to this couple in the second row, who were, it turns out, they were Indian. And he looked at them, and he said, the next act isn't black, she isn't white, but she's... And they said, was she brown? And then he said, well, you said it, I didn't, as if calling someone brown is a terrible, awful thing. No, it just happens to be the shade of my skin. And then he said to them, you still might not like her, because it could be the wrong type of brown for you. Which browns are you? And they said, well, we're Indian. And then he looked to me, and I was off stage, ready to come on. He'd been doing this for 10 minutes. You shouldn't do 10 minutes before bringing an act on anyway. And he looked to me as if to ask, and what kind of brown are you to me on the side? And usually in that situation, you want to keep your professionalism up. You want to get rebooked. Um, you don't want to piss off somebody who's more experienced and more famous than you. And usually I would acquiesce, maybe. Instead, what I shouted back was, shut up and bring me the fuck on. That's what the audience did, and I came on, and I had a great time. But I've never seen a white man so upset. <laughs> and that was my feminist win for the week. Well done! <laughs> Last time I was at the Oxford Playhouse, I was a student here. I produced Stephen Sondheim's company at the Oxford Playhouse... So on stage, what I really want to do here is go, Bobby, 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 baby, Bobby, Bobby. I wasn't in it, but obviously I wanted to be. There's, nobody produces things who doesn't really want to be on stage. I Just give us a cheer if you're currently attending the University of Oxford. If you're currently attending Oxford Brooks. Just, they don't sound as confident, do they? And that's... That's the system. That's the system of oppression (laughs) between the patriarchal university and its little sister over there going, I'm good too. So just give us a cheer if you're a townie. They sound happier because they don't have exams. Um, Just give us a cheer if you've got exams and you came anyway. Two, two. Sisters, you're my people. You're my people. That's basically what I did. Just give us a cheer if you are so confident in your upper 2 1 first class results that you're going to get that you're like, so in the bank, I can also come out to a podcast. No. <laughs> come on! Now, okay, now imagine you're a man and you're asked that question. <laughs> and you, yeah. you might be a man, you might be a man. I'm not assuming you're not a man. Just give us a cheer if, in fact, if you are a man. You said you sat in the front row, so you've made direct eye contact with me. It's your own fault. (laughs) What's your name? Andrew. 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 And Andrew has a T-shirt that says, Rusty Stag Motorcycles. (laughs) I often do. Has anyone got a feminist T-shirt? And that is... Is that, in a way, a feminist T-shirt? Rusty Stag Motorcycles? Well, there's no gender stereotype, apart from the stag, I guess. There's no gender stereotype other than the stag. (laughs) Sure. 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 (laughs) Sure. (laughs) But the stag is rusty... And therefore crippled 
and dying, exactly. like the patriarchy, <laughs> coming to that's coming to an that's end. Right. So rust, all stags are rusty. I think yep. that's what hashtag not all stags. <laughs> Just give us a cheer if you listen to the podcast. <laughs> give us a cheer if you don't know what you're at. <laughs> and an, okay, I should I, I should yeah, and are now a little bit concerned that. Uh, if you don't know what you're at, it's a podcast, and that means we're recording this. A podcast, if you don't know what a podcast is, a podcast is radio that nobody stops you making. <laughs> they just don't even... I keep expecting to get an email going, that's enough now. Uh, but you can just do it. You just rec- as long as you're happy to record yourself and take responsibility for that and put it on the internet, you can make a podcast. But if you haven't heard this podcast, it's a podcast about our... Well, it's about, it's about feminism. Who's here for the first time? You here for the first time? Andrew, uh, you listen to it at home? I do. You're a big fan? Yes. Great. Are you excited right now? I am. Super. Are you a student here? No. What do you do? I'm an IT release manager. An, an IT what manager? Release manager. Release manager. <laughs> <laughs> what, you let go two computers a day into the wild? <laughs> it's very humane. It's very humane. So we're learning tonight to celebrate our wins, okay? And repeal... Uh, <laughs> was a huge win. There are women in Ireland who have been out knocking on doors, taking abuse, doing extraordinary, extraordinary things. Legends. Legends, absolutely. And we are going to look at the stats, which are incredible, and some other wins. But I thought, for our comedy part, it would be really nice to celebrate another win that's historical, that's fun. I'm going to need you to do some work for me, Andrew. Yes. Um, we know you paid to get in, but you know, you're I, a dude. He loves it. He loves it. Um, do you love it? Sorry, I should check. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. It. He looks like he loves it. I'm very good at knowing when people love things, but I still, still consent. It's good to check. Okay. Uh, I need you to look up S-O-R-O-S-I-S Club on Wikipedia, and I'm going to call on you for something in a bit. All right. So in order to do this bit, we need to bring on our amazing guests. Today's first guest is an Australian comedian who recently won the Golden Gibbo Award at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival and is now living and working in the UK. Please welcome to the stage the wonderful Laura Davis! Today's second guest is another Australian comedian. You may have heard her on the Bugle podcast or on her very own podcast, Tea with Alice and Troll Play. Please welcome Alice Fraser. Hello. Uh, This is a story from 1868. That's quite recent in Oxford. (laughs) Picture, if you will, Delmonico's Restaurant in New York City. Women were not allowed to go to restaurants without a man. I know. Women were not allowed into restaurants without, ma- without a man. I would starve to death. I mean, I mean, <laughs> what, I'm what? not cooking and I don't know anyone. <laughs> <laughs> there were private dining rooms that women could go into, but most women couldn't afford to. The only place that women could eat was there were a handful of ice cream saloons. I would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> and they allowed women to eat by themselves. When did they stop being called saloons and start being That's, called parlours? I genuinely sounds... don't know. I genuinely don't know. Andrew, get on that. <laughs> ice cream, there were ice cream saloons in 1868 where you could get ice cream. And I think some of them were female-only ice cream saloons. Uh-huh. That's, all right, feminism has already gone too far. I would like to bring back the female-only ice cream saloons, please. I just want those swinging doors to open and everyone to stop and see. Draw. Yeah, the, amazing. If cream. a man walks in, the piano player stops playing. Yeah. And then a woman gets out a dueling ice cream scoop. <laughs> there was a woman called Jane Cunningham Crowley, and she was a member of this particular restaurant club, Delmonico's, but she was only allowed to go in attendance with a man. And guess who turned up in New York City? A man? Yes, a man. <laughs> a man who everyone wanted to celebrate. He was an English man. Can you guess who it was? Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde's are such a good guess, but wrong. 
Dickens. Yes, it was Charles Dickens. So Jane Cunningham Crowley wanted to go to this dinner that was being held at Delmonico's by the New York Press Club in honour of Charles Dickens. And the president of the New York Press Club and the gentleman who belonged to it said, no, no women can come. And she said, but I really want to come. And they said, well, then you can sit behind a curtain and be neither seen nor heard. You can listen to Dickens, but no one's allowed to know that you're there sitting behind a curtain. That is how I do most parties too, though, I think. (laughs) I like this story. I don't know what went wrong. You would have been very happy. Imagine you can go to this party, all right, but you have to be quiet, sit in the corner, be like, I'm on it, got it. (laughs) And no one can see you. You're just sitting there with a pint of ice cream. Ah, the best! Behind a curtain on your own, listening into Dickens. (laughs) Like it's a podcast. That is my weekends. <laughs> That's totally your dream. So Jane Cunningham Crowley wrote under her... Jo- she had a journalist name, Jenny June, which will from now on be my pen name if I write for the Huffington Post. <laughs> so she decided they were going to kind of do a pushback. So she and some friends went to an ice cream saloon and came up with a plan. That, Is the plan more ice cream? Exactly. That's always my plan. It, it was to start a women's club and they decided on the name Sorosis. S O R O S I S. Nah, mate. Does, now, does anybody know what that word means? It's the fruit that grows from a flower, so it's when a bud turns into fruit. I thought it was what my dad had on his liver. <laughs> I agree, it's not the most attractive of names, but I suppose it also sort of sounds like sorority. So, what I want to see is an improvisation. Of the ice cream saloon where these women came up with this idea to come up with a dining club, their own dining club, the first dining club in America that was only female, called Cirrhosis. Okay, and what I'm needing from you now, Andrew, is the names of some of the women who were in the Cirrhosis dining club. Have you looked that up for me? Uh, yeah, Alice uh, Carey. Yeah, there's some really good ones, though. There's one, what's... Fanny the, Fern. Fanny Fern, <laughs> thank you. There's another Fanny. Fanny Gobble. Yeah. Yes. Dibs. Fanny Gobble. Dibs, dibs, dibs. <laughs> Fanny Gobble dibs. Is she Fanny Smith Gobble? Oh, she is Fanny Smith Gobble, yes. Yeah, she's yeah. Fanny Smith Gobble. And she insisted on that hyphen. It. I believe she kept her maiden name of Smith and inserted it. <laughs> so who wants to be Fanny Fern? And who wants to be Fanny Smith? You've grabbed Banks Fanny I'm Smith dibs Gobble. The, on the gob. Fanny Smith Gobble, Fanny yeah. Fern. I'll take Fanny Fern. Fanny Fern. And I'll be who's, Fanny Fern. And can you be Jenny June? Oh, sure, I'll be, sure, I'll be Jenny June. Okay. I'll be Fanny Fern in this accent and this accent only. Uh, <laughs> because I've just landed. Just uh, landed yeah. from the old world. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I've come to America, I where do, I'm very welcome. I shouldn't have this accent. Do, it shouldn't exist. Do, just do, imagine. Do you have a name for me? Um, can be Virgie McFarlane. Yeah, you're Virgie, Virgie. McFarlane. Yeah. Have you made that up? <laughs> Virgie McFarlane. One thing about Deborah is she's the right Virgie. <laughs> Virgie McFarlane and Fanny Smith Gobble. This is the best female dining club ever. Okay, so uh, could I have from the audience the name of the female only ice cream saloon that they are meeting in? <laughs> double, double Scooper. I heard Double Super and Scooper. Antigone. Oh, I heard MTV, and I was like... <laughs> Left field, but I like it. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. I'm going to... Any gobble at Antigone, double scoop up. All right, what's my motive? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to kill someone. <laughs> no. I'm uh, going to put a pen behind my ear for journalistic integrity. Okay. Sorry, what was my name again? Virgie McFarlane. Virgie McFarlane, I'm terrible Virgie. at Virgie... Fanny. Fanny, Fanny, Fanny. No, Fanny. Oh, you're Fanny. Jenny. Fanny Fern. I'm Jenny. Jenny June. So you're the ringleader. I feel like I've lost out in the name game here. Do you want Fanny Fern? No, no. It's no, no, you're the ringleader. You're the most important person here. Oh, no. Okay, do you want me to be Jenny June and you can be Virgie McFarlane? Sure, I'll be Virgie. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll be Jenny June. I've called you all here today for a reason. <laughs> Charles Dickens is in town and the New York Press Club says we can't get in. We have to sit behind a curtain and be quiet. Are we going to take that? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Cool. <laughs> if no one bothers you. You can eat all the ice cream you want. No one can see. But don't you see? We won't be in the thick of it. We won't be able to ask Mr. Dickens any questions. Why should men get to do all the talking and we should get to do all the listening sitting behind curtains? Have you, have you, have you read the book? <laughs> That's irrelevant. I listen. I've read some of the Pickwick papers. It's, the point is, he's an important man and he's in town and I want to have dinner with him and I'm not allowed. 
I got the scoop. It's a pistachio. <laughs> I, Virgil, why must you always do wordplay when I'm trying to do women's rights? Come on, suffrage. Stop ice screaming about it. <laughs> name for a women's dining club. I'm sick of not being allowed into restaurants unaccompanied by a man. Let's take over Delminico's and show them what's what. What's what? (laughs) Show them what's what. (laughs) Who's there? (laughs) (laughs) Neither Fanny nor Jenny nor Joe nor Virgil. I would be preferred if I could be addressed by my full name. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's no, very I... informal. We don't know each other very well. If you could say Miss Fanny Gobble, uh, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> Neither Miss Fanny Smith Gobble. Thank you. <laughs> Why did you take his name? You see, if it you... made me. If you fought the patriarchy, you could have just kept your maiden name. But I did, right in the middle. And then I went behind the country, heaps of ice cream, and. <laughs> Look. Neither of the Fannies, Fanny Gobble Smith or Smith Gobble or Fanny Fern, nor Virgil McFarlane is getting behind this. Come on, sisters, we need a name for the dining club. What are your name suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> something, something, something snappy. Something snappy. Like, something that says the sisterhood, budding sisterhood. Like the goblet. But, uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> we're dining. I like that one. Not the gobblers, no. That just sounds like we're going to go down on a lot of the guys. Uh, excuse me, it does not. And I should know it is my surname. I mean, I suppose they would let us into the dining club more readily. Yeah, they put no, more curtains for the wrong in. reasons. For the wrong reasons. We want to be known for our brain, so let's make it something classical. Something um, diseasey. Because <laughs> I, I want like it to be catchy. I like that. <laughs> You know what? I'm starting to like your play, Virgil McFarlane. Virgie, something Latin like Virgie. Yeah. And Antigone, what a woman. Something to do with diseases. So they flowers. Flowers, diseases, sisterhood. Thrush. <laughs> that is flora. Yeah. I like yeah, I like that. Thrush is a bird, <laughs> and it multiplies. <laughs> it does. Vaginal. It's to surprising places. <laughs> Back to the theme. <laughs> I'll have a cranberry ice cream, please. <laughs> Two scoops. That won't clear up thrush. You need actual medicine for it. It's a myth, <laughs> like Antigone. <laughs> we just need a name for, for this dining club. We need a name for the dining club, and then we're going to go in there, and we're going to be like, all oh, women all the time. We're going to take over the restaurants of Manhattan. Something to do with a sisterhood like a sorority. The Thrush Goblet. <laughs> <laughs> I like where you're going. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But I wish Not you would go there. catchy enough. Something like a sorority, but a, more of a... Look, I feel like you're steering us in a very specific direction. <laughs> what if you mixed a if sorority you have any with... Maybe what if you mixed a sorority, sorority with, with ISIS? <laughs> sorority with ISIS, what would you get? Oh, my flaky skin's really itchy. It's just my psoriasis playing out. I've got it! (laughs) Sorosis! 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 Very good. Sorosis! Can we we take a... Like the eyes, can we take the eyes and the knees mm, for that name? Because no. I feel weird about it. Look, my <laughs> name's Fanny Gobble. I think it's a terrible name. <laughs> so let's hear the knees. Let's hear the eyes. I, yeah, okay. Uh, there's eye, there's no eye in sor- <laughs> sorosis. <laughs> sorosis. It could be though, you don't know. <laughs> there is actually, there's an eye right there. I can see it. Oh, right. oh she, she had it written down. Yeah, I had it written time. down the whole time actually. Oh, we were, oh were you angling the fiend towards that? Mm. Yep. Like didn't pick up on that at all. <laughs> So we've got a name. Now we just have to convince Delmonico's to let us in. Let's go and see Lorenzo Delmonico. Okay, so after the interval, we will do a scene where Andrew plays Lorenzo Delmonico. Oh my God, there's a lady coming with ice cream. She's genuine. Are you coming with ice cream? Oh my God, she actually has ice cream. (gasps) 
Okay, so and there's someone else's ice cream. There's so much ice cream. There's so much ice cream. Okay, like we've literally done an advert for that woman who's got the ice cream. It's so exciting. Everyone's got to get ice cream in the interval. Everyone, and then we're going to do a scene with ice cream where we get Lorenzo to come to Antigone Two Scoop, and we pitch him our idea. Okay, so are you ready to be Lorenzo? Okay. Also, is there anybody who does Oxford drama or anything like that? Does anyone? Does anyone do drama? Okay. Nice. Does, anyone, does, does anyone feel they could play Charles Dickens? Because <laughs> there's a scene coming up with yeah, Charles Dickens. Someone there. Enthusiastic. Yes. Okay. What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> Charles. Charles Dickens. That's good. That's instant improvisation. Okay. So we need somebody to play Charles Dickens after the break, and we've already got Lorenzo Del Monaco. That's sorted. Are you happy to do that? Yeah, I mean, what sort of level are we pitching the Italian accent at? Cause... Just do oh. it. Uh, you can either do New York Italian. Oh, like, God. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Yeah, that's good. Oh. Or you have to deliver all of your lines in actual Italian. Oh, mm. oh that would be funny. Yeah. That would be funny. Can Google? you speak Italian? I, I've got my phone on, so I can use Google Translate. No problem. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> He's an IT, Deborah. <laughs> He's... A... <laughs> Are you ready for your role, Andrew? Andrew Rusty Stagg is... Uh, that's a good name, actually, Rusty Stagg. That's my a t-shirt good. company, just in case you're interested. <clears throat> that's, it's your t-shirt, t-shirt company? company yeah. Is it your own t-shirt, t-shirt company? I thought Rusty you were an IT. I do, I do, I do a lot. <laughs> Should Rusty we leave Stagg you alone? Rusty is a Renaissance man in the front row. Come on. <laughs> so we need another microphone for mm. Andrew. Okay, and this is where we talk you into... Mm. You're resistant, obviously. You don't, you think, I don't know about this. Women in a restaurant, alone... That's your attitude. Do you want luxury vanilla or treacle toffee? Oh, the, the, the or strawberry. But don't give it to him yet. We need to keep it in We need to lure him on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, obviously. This is prop. This is prop. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So do we have a... Do you know the Q&A mics? Could we have one for Andrew, Rusty Stag? We're giving Rusty Stag a lot of free advert, though, actually. <laughs> Rusty, yeah. Rusty, Rusty Stag, Stag T-shirt. Shirt. Rusty Stag, you better make us a Guilty Feminist T-shirt. Yeah, okay. but you better have, like, weird sexist T-shirts on your website. No. Nope. No, if that turns Fed out, very quickly and assured, I'm happy. <laughs> he's not. Look, he said the front row of the Guilty Feminist as if his T-shirts say bitches and hoes. <laughs> they definitely don't. But now I just want a T-shirt that says bitches and hoes in quotation marks, Deborah Francis White. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty Stag, you can have that. <laughs> Hashtag irony. 10%. Okay, can we get Lorenzo... Let's get him into character. Can we get Lorenzo Del Monaco on stage? Is there a way up? Around, are, there, are, there, are there stairs? No. Um, Okay. How do we get him up? Can we lift him up? Is that what will health and safety allow? No, let's not do that. What will health and safety I allow? Think... Can somebody just... Because we should have... I mean, this is... We did, we did prep this. We all yeah, smashed we the glass ceiling to get in here, so we don't know any other way up. <laughs> <laughs> and who's going to play Charles Dickens? You need to be at the ready. Someone's coming to help you. Thank you. Who's Dickens? Who, wa- who wants to be Dickens? Don't, you can't say woo. You have to say... I, my name is, and I would like to be <clears throat> Charles Dickens. Thank you. Good job, Great. Molly. Like Molly Cooper. So Molly, Molly's got to get ready because <clears throat> when Lorenzo Del Monaco has had a turn, that's when we need to get Charles Dickens up here. Is I Lorenzo Del Monaco on stage? Okay. All right. Hello, Lorenzo. He's coming. Oh, okay. Hello, Lorenzo. All right. Okay. So you have to go over there, and you're coming, and we're planning. Is this even on? Oh, it is on. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh oh, a man with a microphone. Oh, I realised we, we could have used that one from there. <laughs> we know what we've started now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Lorenzo's coming. Mm. Don't fuck it up. Okay? We need to convince him that we need to get women, unaccompanied women, why do we have to be accompanied? By whom? Into Delmonico's. We're going to start the first ever female dining society. We don't want any men in there that night. Nobody, I tell you. Nobody, nobody. Not even Lorenzo? Obviously Lorenzo. He's going to bring the food. He's the manager, maitre d'. Hey, all the ladies. Oh, hello, Lorenzo. (laughs) Lorenzo. Uh, What's going on here, y'all? It's the worst American accent ever. You say dog. Us now. No. no. Dog. What's going on oh, here, y'all? Said dog. Oh. <laughs> so, Lorenzo Domenico is the only American Italian who's from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> there was one family of Dominicos that went to Texas. All the rest went to New York City and they, the, 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 the famous places in the East. Hello, um, Lorenzo. I'm Fanny Gobble. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, Lorenzo. I'm Fanny Fern. Hi, Fanny. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> I'm Virgie McFarlane. Nice to meet you. 
Nice to meet you, too. Have you got any more ice cream? And I'm Jenny June, but that's just my pen name. <laughs> but don't worry about that now. Lorenzo, we've got a proposition for you. It's a crazy proposition. It's women in your restaurant. Get out of town. <laughs> Unaccompanied. Unaccompanied? Y'all joking? <clears throat> I would, I would like to eat alone in your restaurant. I would like to eat ice cream behind a curtain, please. I mean, we I'm got ha- plenty of curtains, y'all. I'm happy to strike all. a compromise. Fanny Gobble, this is what we're trying to get past. No. We don't want to be shoved into ice cream saloons and sitting behind curtains. I, look, I think women in 2018 are going to look back and really miss it. <laughs> I think they're going to be repealing amendments and just wishing they had a nice curtain to sit behind eating ice cream when no men could ever bother them. I think we're making a huge mistake. <laughs> I don't want to go ahead with cirrhosis, please. <laughs> Fanny Smith gobbled Gurks. This calls to be thrown out of cirrhosis. I'm right back behind a curtain. Lorenzo. Yes. I've got some ice cream with your name on it, but it's not just any ice cream, it's vanilla ice cream. It's not just vanilla ice cream, it's luxury vanilla ice cream. <laughs> As a virgie, I, I protest the sexual nature of that delivery. <laughs> As a fanny, I also I... Take, some... <laughs> take some issue. It could have been more sexual. It is just, after all, vanilla. I didn't you often... Saying that they get their rights by being like, hmm, come eat sexy ice cream with us. Is that what you're saying right now, Deborah Francis White? I'm the guilty I... feminist. Just, just, listen, women have had to do what they've had to do. <laughs> No, they didn't. They could have stayed with the ice cream by themselves. We could have had this. The whole room is an ice cream parlor right now. We could have had this joy. Imagine. I'm not making it sexual. I'm just saying I'm bribing him with ice cream. This ice cream has your name on it, Lorenzo. He runs a restaurant. He's got his own. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please stop pointing out plot holes? <laughs> I've got this ice cream. It's got your name on it. Not so fast, Lorenzo. <laughs> I just want the ice cream. You've got to promise me that you're going to let our all-female dining club in to make history in America. Make history. Do you hear me? History. History. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kind of on board with this idea, but uh, has it got a snappy name, like a good, a good name I can sell? You're going to love it. <laughs> the, the dining club is called <laughs> Cirrhosis. I mean, I like it. <laughs> you're a good man, Lorenzo. De- Demonica Delmonico, you're the only Delmonico in Texas. <laughs> so uh, you guys want to see Charles Dickens, right? Is that right? What was that? Charles Dickens. You want to see Charles Dickens? Well, yes. I've only ever seen him behind a curtain before. We're, what we're, <laughs> we're going to do is invite him to our night, so it doesn't matter that we couldn't go to their dumb night. So we're going to have two nights, if I understand the premise. Are they correctly. Selling, uh, Rusty Stag most eyes at this event? <laughs> <laughs> Well, now we are. <laughs> then I'm on board. This podcast is sponsored by Rusty Stag T-shirts. I really enjoy Rusty Stag T-shirts. Do you, Bishop? I'm a big fan of their bitches, hoes, <laughs> quote of Deborah Frost's white T-shirt. Available for $10.99. 10% of proceeds go to Bishop K. Alley. <laughs> and we're back to the improv. Okay. Uh, is there any chance you could send Mr. Dickens in here now? Um... Just say yes, mate. He yeah. doesn't like curtains. Some, some, somewhere. He's around here somewhere. He's probably behind that curtain. <laughs> okay, Virgie... We're really good with curtains. <laughs> okay, Virgie McFarlane, you're the best at wordplay, and if there's one thing Mr. Dickens loves, it's wordplay. He's a writer after all. All of his characters are named like stuff like Havisham. That's wordplay. You're in charge <laughs> of getting... Yes, Havisham. Like, she really likes ham. Sham. No, it's a sham. Her wedding's a sham. Okay, uh, Ridley. Yes, they're all named stuff like that. <laughs> Chuzzlewit, yeah. It's like when I found out that Flowrider was Florida. <laughs> this is just like the time I found out that the Beatles was a pun. <laughs> so you're in charge of getting Mr. Dickens on board with your amazing wordplay. We'll back you up. I, I don't perform well under pressure. It's all right. <laughs> of course you don't, Virgie, but... <laughs> please. You've got to start sometime. Uh, it's the first time for everything. <laughs> Let me pass I you the cherry ice cream. You can pop it. Um, 
Please, please uh, Mr. Dickens, we, we would like to have your entree into the intellectual society. Um, it's the main reason we're here. It's a restaurant, for fuck's sake. Uh, oh, I see. It's it's black entree, with you. So we've got entree, we've got main. Yeah, it's the main reason we're here. We've got to get past uh, this bad feminism. Uh, we've got to... <laughs> We, we, we've got to get... I got pasta. Uh, we... Um, please... Uh, oh, I'm going to have some of your ice cream. Um, <laughs> this is all great, but Mr. Dickens isn't here yet. You're wasting all the puns. Oh, where is uh, Mr. Where the let's, chicken? Let's, Molly, where let's the... hold this man to book. Molly! Um, where are you? Can you please come on the stage? I feel what? like you didn't catch the hint. Yeah. Get on stage. <laughs> I'm Molly, I'm going to be Dickens, and you're just a hospital. So you Dickens, can you, can you come and visit Why? us? I know you're very busy writing female characters that are not very well-rounded, but if you could <laughs> spare us, we, we would, I would be home eating ice cream by myself behind a curtain, but we're just waiting on you. <laughs> we deserve your presence. It's our just a desserts. Yay. <laughs> Something about pudding. <laughs> we're putting it out there. Yay! Yay. Oh, Mr. Dickens! It's not working. He's very quiet. Hello. That one's working. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello, Mr. Dickens. Hi. You do go on in your books, don't you? Uh, I I just like to express myself, you know? Yeah. (laughs) We've been there. Yeah. Well, oh, what a joy. Welcome to our... uh, She she had the ice cream parlor at Delmonico's right now. We're at the ice cream parlor. No, we're at Del Monaco. No, we're at Del Monaco. Oh, Del Monaco. Oh, okay. club. No. Welcome to Sir Rosie. Oh, no, 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 no. We're trying no, to convince her to do it. We're trying to convince him to do it. Oh. Okay. So, oh. Yeah. it's trying to convince him to come. Dickens, and we know you like talking to men. Yes? Yes. <laughs> but have you ever wondered what's behind the curtain? <laughs> <laughs> Not in a flaps way, like in a real... <laughs> <laughs> Always. Oh, she's just... Probably... I feel like I don't really I, have to do I much. yearn to know what's behind the curtain. Well, we what's would up? love to have you at our Sorosis Cer- Dining Club, which we've just started as the historical first all-women dining club in the whole of the United States of America. We have great expectations of it. You can use that if you need. <laughs> just, if you, you... You can have that. If you didn't do it, it would be a tale of too shitty of you to... <laughs> Will there be lots of food, glorious food? <laughs> there, there will be. If you, <laughs> if you don't come, we'll be really angry. We'll be all livid. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, count me in. <laughs> okay, I, there's a footnote here. In real life, he says no. Oh, <laughs> but, no. but. We are celebrating victories tonight, so we're rewriting history and we're imagining that Charles Dickens said yes and that sexism wasn't as hard as it is. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dickens. That's amazing. Cut to Delmonico's, where the first initial uh, Soros has come. Oh, take your ice cream. Have some what is now Thank ice you very cream much. soup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to have the lights up. This is the very first ever, we're recreating it between us, the very first ever Delmonico's Soros Club, dining club. Okay, so we need you back out because you've got to be serving food. <laughs> I don't know. Just improvise. Anything Jesus. but ice cream, really. Why can't you point? do our jobs? Good. <laughs> okay. Mr. Dickens, would you, love, would you like to address all the women? Hello, women. <laughs> Welcome to Cirrhosis. <laughs> Woo! Uh, enjoy your ice cream. Yay! Thank you, Mr. Dickens. We've changed history! Thank you. T- please take a bow. Thank you very much. For someone who writes very long books, that was a very short speech. I'm not sure it was worth coming out from behind the curtain for. <laughs> Thank you so much. Round of applause, please. Wouldn't it be easy if solving sexism was as easy as that? What, um, making up history. <laughs> yeah, because it I'm is. Just, yeah, it really is. Hello, Guilty Feminists, it's Deborah. Would you like to go for dinner with me and Sindhu V, regular co-host of The Guilty Feminist? 
and maybe have a few drinks and maybe Cindy will start giving you life advice or career advice or romance advice and I'll chip in with a few gags. Perhaps after the dinner, we'll go out into the street and overthrow the patriarchy. Who knows? If you would like to, good news, we've teamed up with Comic Relief to do a prize thon You and a friend could win dinner with us. We will have some mega lols. But you have to go and enter right now if you'd like to win. Just Google Comic Relief, Deborah Francis White, dinner, prize thon and up it'll come. It's 10 quid to enter, but all that money goes to Comic Relief. And there's another prize draw, two free tickets to a Guilty Feminist podcast recording, front row VIPs with backstage passes for before and after the show, including a picnic basket and a bottle of champagne. Come and have a few drinks with us after the show. It's just going to be fabulous. So Guilty Feminist, prize a Comic Relief, Google, 10 quid, well spent. Hopefully it'll be you and I'll see you there. Now, many of you will know that I've written a film which got made. Hurrah! It's called Say My Name and it's done very well at award season and that means it's going to get a premiere at the Odeon Leicester Square on March 19th and we've asked the Odeon to make tickets available for guilty feminist listeners to come along and join us at the premiere. Details of how to buy those will be available on next Monday's podcast so listen early and find out those details but for now save the date March 19th. I've bought a dress. Guilty Feminist, we are coming to a theatre near you in May for a live show. It will not be a podcast recording. It's going to be all singing, all dancing, all comedy, all fabulous. Do not miss it. It's going to be a massive celebration. Here are some dates. For example, on the 15th of May, we're coming to Cardiff on the 16th, Cambridge on the 17th, Aylesbury on the 18th, Bournemouth on the 19th, Oxford. And then the following week, Southampton, Sheffield, and it goes on. If you'd like to know when we're coming to a theatre close to you, go to guiltyfeminist.com or Ticketmaster. Don't miss it. It's going to be an amazing celebration. If you feel you need a little bit more Guilty Feminist in your life, my book is in Waterstones. It's on Amazon. And if you'd like me to read it to you because you prefer the podcast, then go to Audible. And there's hours of book that you can use on your commute when you've run out of podcast. It's called The Guilty Feminist, and it's by Deborah Francis White. This coming Wednesday night, 27th of Feb, I will be part of Mark Watson's 26.2 hours show. It's gone at The Pleasance in London, Carpenter Muse, London N7, nearest Tube Caledonian Road, and you can find it on pleasance.co.uk. It's Mark Watson's Comedy Marathon, and I'll be doing a performance about midnight on the Wednesday night. So come along and support it. It's a brilliant event. Very excited to tell you that I am going to be guesting on one of my favourite podcasts, Do the Right Thing. It's on the 17th of April at the Phoenix in London and you can get tickets from ctickets.com. I will be joining guest Richard Herring and regulars Margaret Cable smith and Michael Legg, hosted by Danielle Ward. See you there. Oh, if you missed the 2019 Oscar coverage, Olivia Colman won. Yay! I was on the Sky Cinema UK TV sofa to catch all the action as it happened. And you can catch it now on Sky. I am delighted to announce that I'm hosting the Stylist Remarkable Women Awards. Go to stylist.co.uk to find out more. Help refugees are desperate for tents and sleeping bags. So go to helprefugees.org to find out how you can donate, where you can find drop-off points, where you can buy new ones which will be shipped there directly or how you can volunteer. That's helprefugees.org. So, on Repeal the Eight, here's some stats. Um, 72.1% of women voted yes. 65.9% of men voted yes. A whopping 87.6% of 18 to 24 year olds voted yes. I believe that children are the future. 84.6% of 25 to 34 year olds voted yes. But 72.8% of 35 to 49 year olds voted yes. And it doesn't go down that much from there, to be honest. And this is what's interesting for us as feminists, so we really want to shift things. 7% said it was through direct contact with campaigners that swayed their vote. 10% said posters affected how they vote. 
34% cited the experience of someone they knew, and 43% said it was people's personal stories that were told to the media. What won this was people telling stories, and we should not forget that that your story is more important than your information. You might have the facts, you might be correct, you might be right, but it is your story that changes the world. Alice. Yes. How do you feel about this, celebrating victories? Are you good at celebrating when you have a feminist win or just even a career win? Are you good at sort of going, yes? Uh, look, I'm not the best at it, but I like to go for a swim when I've succeeded. <laughs> is that what you do? yeah. There's nothing like a swim to bring you face to face with your own mortality. Um, <laughs> it puts me You're one of vicious it. people. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I've had a win. I better have a swim and remind myself I'm going to die. <laughs> no, see, see, that see is my how I sound. That is my voice. Yeah. My motto is: uh, No one's going to die. We're all going to die. So, as a comedian, if I fuck something up, no one's going to die. The worst thing that's going to happen now is like you might laugh slightly less than you'd anticipated. It wouldn't work as a motto if I was a doctor. And. <laughs> But then on the other hand, we're all going to die, so I should just do the work, right? So yeah. that's my motto. I'm selling merch. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, are you yes. good at celebrating when things go right? I'm genuinely quite bad at it. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I'm always so focused on the next thing that if it's... I, I guess it's a protectionist thing. If things go badly, I sort of go, yep, that's fine, because we'll keep working. If things go well, I go, yep, that's great, we'll keep working. And I just I don't stop to look at it. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a real, both a danger of it, but also it's great that some people do do that. Otherwise, we just go, oh, we've won that now, let's have a nice long holiday. And already people have started to say, hey, Northern Ireland is left out in the cold. And the other day I was saying to somebody, you know, it's so awful. And they said to me, Deborah, you know where you were born and raised in Queensland in Australia, you know abortion is a criminal act. And I was like, what? And I just assumed, when I left, uh, being gay was illegal in Queensland. And that obviously was decriminalised. And I assumed that abortion had been decriminalised. Now, in reality, there is access to services. Basically, a doctor has to say the woman or person who is pregnant would be in danger in terms of their body or their mind uh, if this went ahead. So a doctor has to give you permission in a bit of a handmaid's tale sort of way and has to sign it off. And both Queensland and New South Wales are in that position. You don't realise how much of this is going on. In Tasmania, it isn't criminal, but they've just shut the last abortion clinic so it makes it impossible. So Tasmanian women have to go to the mainland. We must celebrate where we can, but we must also look at what's next. Bisha, you've got some things that you would like to say, here's what's next. You've got yes, a list? but now I feel like they're very sarcastic. That's okay. We need some laughter. One I've just, moment, just I've, to go back, like, I've just two said some sad things. steps. When you looked at me after telling all of those incredible statistics, I thought the question you were going to ask was, can you tell your abortion story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I also thought... This is very inappropriate. And I was like, I was like, no, why are you I asking, have, Alice? No, I, didn't, I, I, don't, like, I, yeah. I have no idea whether or not you have an abortion. No, story. I don't have one, but I, I did just go on my period, or as I like to call it, changing the wallpaper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't think that's the same. It's not the same. Um, and so uh, I was sort of thinking, well, I don't have a story, but I could... I mean, as far as I know, having a period isn't criminal in Queensland, but, you know, at some if point it would, it, would, it, happen, it would have been. They would, though. They would <laughs> love that. Bisha? That I, so, I think Deborah, so me, when me and Deborah were discussing, Deborah and I were discussing. <laughs> She's got the Oxford on her. Yeah. I don't have a chip on my shoulder. It's fine. I didn't <laughs> want to come here anyway. It's no big deal. It's, no, it's fine. It's all right. But were you, not stopped, were you not stopped by your school from coming? Yes, I was. Do you want me to tell that story? We should change this, actually. So a lot of state schools have a... Sorry, sidetrack. We're in Oxford. You need to know this. A lot of state schools that don't necessarily send a lot of their students on to Oxford and Cambridge, before you're even allowed to apply, will decide based on your profile if they will even recommend you to apply to Oxford. And if they decide that, no, because of these arbitrary reasons, we don't want you to apply, they tell you, I will tank your application and I will give you a bad reference because we don't want the university to allow you in in case that you don't get in, and then it ruins their stats of applications to get in ratio for Oxford and Cambridge, and that's why I was never allowed to apply. Even though you got all A's? Yes. <clears throat> so we should fix state schools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the next thing, right? Yeah, that's the next thing that's that I want to Okay, do. so that's number one. You want to fix that? I want to fix state schools. I want to fix that all public transport in this country and the planet should be accessible to the greatest degree that it can. Because I just think 
it's one of the biggest shames of our country that people just can't move around the country. People can't get from place to another. When we have, it's not like we don't have the technology or there isn't the money for it. It's like there's money for loads of stupid shit that we don't need. We need this. People need this. It's a fundamental right, and why aren't we doing it? And also, like, nationalise the railways. <laughs> the things that I want. Um, I also want... Um, oh, I want to get rid of the tampon tax. I know that's kind of gone out of the, the fashion to discuss. But I still want to get rid of that. I don't think there should be... I mean, that's common sense. That's another thing we need. Um, I think what everyone should do is just agree that for, like, three months we'll free bleed. <laughs> then they'll be fucking begging us to take them. <laughs> Tampons will then be... I've actually, uh, tampons and pads uh, do have a tax on them, but bread doesn't, so I've just been using tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> I like Maybe the... a naan if it's a heavy day. <laughs> <laughs> because it's such a good visual, right? Of you. Mmm, so yeasty. Like... Mm. <laughs> you do have to watch out for that. <laughs> Um, equal pay Don't. in every field. Can we have that? Equal pay? Can we just do that now? That's not a, it's not a myth. People love this argument that it's a myth and they want to break down the statistics and be like, but not in this one and not in this one and not in this one. It's like, yeah, but come on. You know? <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> and it's very hard because sometimes I get impassioned in the moment and I want to be like, obviously this isn't true, but I don't have the time to spend with you. But also just telling lots of men to shut up isn't... I've heard it's not productive. <laughs> Laura has a great story about this. Which one? I... I no, I'm no, really I, there's a few. Because I haven't had any ice cream. Can you pass I will ice cream? always uh, check my fee for stand-up against one of my male comic friends because I'll get an email. So, oh, okay, you get $300 for this show and I will... Check who was on the lineup the last few weeks, work out which one is a man friend of mine, see how much they got paid, and then come back and say, oh, that's interesting because you paid this person this much. And I used to, when I was starting stand-up, get paid in cash in an envelope, and we went out to dinner afterwards, and my friends got their envelopes out, took the money out, and went, oh, we we're going to pay for a meal. And I was like, oh, you got paid in 250s, I got paid in five... No, I got paid in 420s. I got... 80 cents to the dollar for the exact same spot. Wow, you got $80 and shows. they got $100? Yes. And I was better than them. <laughs> Has anyone got a question? Yes. Do you think that pay should be negotiated at all? Or do you not think that pay should just be set for a given job? Why are we negotiating pay? I think all pay should be fought out in a Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> what we do, certainly. Yeah, uh, we have, we're so in a vague. freelance industry, and I think a lot, of, a lot more people are working in freelance roles where you're guessing, and there's no Big economy. conversation yeah. happening. About, I always say to people, talk about what money you're making with your peers if you're doing the exact same job, I think it's important that we kind of strip away it's the stigma. It's hard to ask people what they're getting hard, for. yeah, but I'll offer it up yeah. and be like, this is how much I'm getting for this in the private space when you feel comfortable because that's how you find out. That's how I found out that I wasn't getting paid for the same job another male comedian was getting paid for. Mm. Yeah. Only because two people so, are comfortable enough to talk so about it. So if you're a male ally, share, and I would also say, because women of colour are often paid less than white women, if you're a white ally, share, and just check in. You, do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I got uh, strawberries and clotted cream. Okay, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. I got honey and stem ginger. Yeah, I'm not interested in either of those. <laughs> you got, you got <laughs> chocolate, so clearly you're paid more. That's the pay gap. That's true. Yeah, yeah. right there in action. Um, so, firstly, can I just say I came to the London Palladium show on Thursday and had the best time with my ultra feminist cousin. And we loved every single speaker and every single thing that was said. Um, and obviously that show was about change and this show is about wins and I feel like they're really closely connected. And with Repeal the Eighth, I feel that that's a massive change that's been made and the momentum around that was huge. How do we keep that momentum going and how do we keep momentum going in this country where actually a lot of change still needs to be made and yes, there are things still going on, you know, the kind of all of the work around periods was massive and amazing, but I felt that that then stopped a little bit and, and then focus changed and I feel like how do we keep that momentum going 
when huge changes are being made, and I feel like people are kind of going, changes made, that's great. How do we keep that going? Get the Tories out. <laughs> Okay, so that's I'll write that down. <laughs> the Tories out. Uh, Laura, momentum. I get to answer. Uh, how to fix the world? All right. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, recognizing that frustration is a very important part of it because I, I think that anger and frustration is something that really motivates people to keep working. So, sort of, without living a horrible life, being angry all of the time. Uh, not setting back is essentially what I said before of of not going. Uh, okay, that was good. Let's all look at it for a while. Just going. That was good. All right. And what's next? Like that sort of keeping the focus on the on the next task is always good. Mm. And to bring it back to the, like the celebration of wins as well. Anger is a great fuel, but joy is also a great fuel. Mm. Like we did this. What else can we do? Is a beautiful feeling. I think. And, and getting so, creative. I think, around these things. Like, make it fun and creative and imaginative with each other because I think that's the biggest thing that you can do to set a fire and have people want to join your gang. There's huge cuts to refugees coming. Ongoing, yeah. Well, one of the campaigners was talking about it the other night, uh, Laura Bates from Everyday Sexism, and she was talking about it at the 100th episode show, and she said because there's going to be changing to housing benefits, which means it's something like a third of refugees will have to close because it... I don't know if it's as simple as you won't be able to use your housing benefits to stay at a refuge anymore, but uh, it sounds similar to that. So we said we would do a show together at the House of Commons because what needs to happen is MPs need to vote to stop that motion going through. So we're going to try and do a show at the House of Commons and make it like a party to try and get in as many MPs as we can who will want to be in that space and then we will convince them. But we'll start partly convince them through comedy and through making them feel part of our tribe. Mm. And so they go, oh, look, you, know, you guys have made a really good case, which is what Amica George did with yeah. period poverty. I think I understand the frustration as well. Like That's 100% agreed. Uh, there's also the sense of, I think people who want to make change want to do it now. We're so fucking sick of this shit that we just want it all to change now. It's like, totally understand the sense of, oh, we smashed it, now what? Because everything's still broken. Um, and I think, I think that's why I enjoy pairing up with Deborah because then she's like, let's include people, whereas I just want to shake people. Um, <laughs> so I totally understand. I, I think one thing to keep in mind that really helps me is that there are a lot of us doing it in different ways. So Deborah's doing it in her way, I'm shouting at people in my way, and they're all valid and they're all useful in their own lane. And I think with that overall push that's happening, if everyone's pushing in the correct direction, we can get stuff done. It's just we come to it in different ways. I absolutely agree with that. And I think we need Sisters Uncut who are going out and doing extraordinary acts of, like, outrages like the suffragettes used to do. And we also need Stella Creasy and Jess Phillips who are in Parliament trying to change things. But we also, I think we do need to support and amplify each other more. I think on the left we're really poor at going, you're not doing it the right way! You're not bringing down the patriarchy the way I would bring it down! Instead of just going, look, you're on your bit. It's not how I want to go about it. It's not how I feel about it. I'm going to attack this bit. But what you're doing there is eroding something or it's changing something. And if you really think it isn't or you think they're doing the wrong thing, then can we build a bridge and say, hey, you're in my tribe, so you might want to know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you get more people with ice cream than with curtains. <laughs> That's true. And on that note... Yeah. There could be no finer end to the show than you get more people with ice cream than with curtains. Laura, have you got anything to plug? Uh, yes, I just moved here like two weeks ago. Um, and I... In a flat? Hmm? Yeah, I need a flat. Uh, no, I found a flat. Uh, <laughs> uh, You're doing I'm well. I'm doing a whole run of shows. I've got a website with the dates on it, uh, but I'm doing a show. It's called Ghost Machine. If you would like to see me inside an IKEA duvet cover for an hour shouting out an existential crisis at you at Edinburgh or in London or in Manchester, please come visit because I'll be inside the duvet cover. And if you don't turn out, it's just my night. <laughs> It's a phenomenal show. I really highly recommend it. I've seen it like four times. Wonderful. Alice, do you have anything to plug? I have a podcast called Tea with Alice where I talk about difficult ideas with interesting people. I have a podcast called Troll Play where we take the manure of the internet and turn it into the flowers of joy. Uh, I have a <laughs> I'm occasionally a co-host on The Bugle. Also, I'm doing a bunch of shows. Look me up online. I'm there. Great. Alice Fraser. 
Bish Kelly, do you have anything to plug? I'd like to plug my podcast. It's called Grown Up Land. It's created by the Spontaneity Shop for BBC Radio 4. The other co-hosts are May Martin and Ned Sedgwick, who, uh, if you know us, you'll have heard of them. And Steve Ali does special appearances on it too, and it's a great podcast. You can find it at all good podcast outlets. And I would like to plug Rusty Stag T-shirts. <laughs> um, at rustystag.com. Rustystag.co.uk, go there and get your T-shirt. Okay, any last message about winning or feminism, Laura? Feminism is winning, summed up. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Bisha? Oh, um... <laughs> the key to winning... <laughs> <laughs> You're right to laugh. That was beautiful. The it key... was a laugh, a laugh of being moved. Okay. <laughs> the key to winning is sisterhood. Oh, that's lovely. What's worth waiting for? Alice? Uh, you'd think I would have had time to prepare a thing. I stalled for you loads. <laughs> yeah, you really did. But I was just fascinated. I was drawn into your... Um, Look, we, could, we can keep doing good things. We've done so many good things. Look at us talking on stage not being owned by a man. How great is that? I know. We're not even accompanied by a man. Yeah. Yeah. He's I... behind the curtain. <gasps> That's true. Tom's behind the curtain. Tom, are you behind the curtain? He doesn't even have ice cream. Tom's behind the curtain. So Tom's come out of the curtain. Oh, my God. It's happened. We've reversed sexism. <laughs> And okay. this is the final episode of The Guilty Feminist. <laughs> we've, we've, We're done. <laughs> Smash the patriarchy. Check us out, Guilt Fempon on Twitter, Guilty Feminist on Instagram, and if you could rate, review, and subscribe every single episode, that would help us out. But only if you give it... Thank you. You have been listening to The Guilty Feminist with me, Deborah Francis White, guest co-host, Fisher Kayali, and our very special guest, Laura Davis and Alice Fraser. The recording engineer was Chris Sharp. Music was by Mark Hodge. The producer was Tom Selinski for the Spontaneity Shop. Thanks to Tony Hanna at PBJ Live, as well as the Oxford Playhouse, as well as all of you for listening. For more information about this and other episodes, visit guiltyfeminist.com. <laughs> Thank you very much. And thank you, Rusty Stag and Dickens. You've been amazing. That's our show. Bye bye. And then uh, at Oxford Playhouse. Percy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was his name, but you can shout that in Oxford and someone will answer. <laughs> Percy, is it at Oxford Playhouse? Yes, it is. Of course it is. Thank you, Percy. What's your... What, can I have...